The guidelines um, internationally recommend that delirium symptoms are treated in a very targeted way, but there has never been a clinical trial to actually establish whether this is uh, the best approach. Um, so we worked with the Palliative Care Clinical Studies Collaborative, which is the Australian Palliative Care Clinical Trials Group, to undertake a, a trial that explored the use of risperidone and haloperidol, both antipsychotic medications, to see if they improved targeted delirium symptoms in palliative care patients, many who had advanced cancer. That has been sort of the well-established treatment, but it never has been really established in placebo-controlled trials. So we randomised people who had very specific delirium symptoms to receive either risperidone, haloperidol, or we um, also had a control group that had their medical precipitants of delirium managed and non-pharmacological care. Um, and that was um, the three arms of the study. So all of the groups um, were, we supported the ward nurses in making sure people's hearing and vision were maximised, um, that they were orientated to their environment. We tried to make the ward environment um, conducive to sleep. Um, and these were all individualised to the ability of the actual participant and what would work well for them. We actually found that delirium symptoms improved better in the group, in the control group, um, and that um, started, we started to see those improvements from the first day of the study. Well, I think, um, and other work has recently also been uh, published, a systematic review also supports that we currently really do not have evidence that supports antipsychotics um, improving delirium outcomes. Um, we have a really strong evidence base for non-pharmacological therapies, especially to prevent delirium. But because these require a whole of system change, we need health systems that value these types of interventions um, and put those in place in a really systematic way. They're much harder to put in place and often get forgotten. So I think in cancer care, delirium has been the unfog unforgotten complication of um, cancer. In two out of three people with cancer, at some point during their advanced illness in particular, they will possibly get delirium, yet no one talks about it. Um, cancer uh, services are not well set up to put some of these preventative measures in place, um, and I think that needs to really be on the agenda that there isn't currently evidence that supports that they improve delirium symptoms and we have much better ways, albeit maybe more complex to implement, um, to improve delirium symptoms. So ABC. cancer services need to set up systematic delirium screening. It's often missed or detected really late. And so if we detect that the person has delirium really early, we can implement the treatment of the precipitants, which might be an infection or a metabolic change like hypercalcemia, quickly and expediently and reduce the impact on the brain. Um, after that, we also need um, the supportive care um, for people with cancer to be promoting sensory um, awareness so that they are aware of the environment, they're orientated to their environment. Mobility is also really important and hospitals need to be conducive to sleep, um, which is you know, sometimes difficult when they're very noisy environments.